Hello, and welcome back to Satisfactory. I'm Crack and Fall. You may have noticed that this is the first Satisfactory episode in a while. Man, it's been a while. I made a video recently that kind of goes into a little bit of detail on what happened there. Um, not about Satisfactory in particular, but about the channel and uploads and things like that. Still working through some stuff. You can watch that right here or look at the link in the description. Moving forward, I'm going to be doing a little bit different format for these Satisfactory episodes. I'm going to be doing shorter episodes. I'm going to keep them within about 30 minutes. Uh, because a couple people have asked for that and it makes sense. It's just easier to edit for me. I have a big backlog of satisfactory episodes. We did a lot since the last time you saw an episode. So I would like to share those things, but it's going to take a while rather than editing those huge streams that I did four hour, six hour streams down into 30 minute episodes, because in general, I had one goal for an episode and it took me six hours to do. I'm going to be splitting those up into multiple 30 hour episodes, which means that sometimes the episodes won't be as action packed and won't honestly won't meet my editing principles or, or goals. Uh, because there's a lot of things that I put into my episodes. I want my Let's Play episodes to be informative. I want people who've never played Satisfactory to look at it and be like, I want to play Satisfactory too. I want it to be fun and have you feeling like you're hanging out with me. I want funny things that happen in stream to be in the episode. I want the episode to cover a specific strategy that I you talk about at the beginning of stream and then I go and do it. Like uh, in this episode, we start aluminum. And so I wanted to show every process in that episode, which then made this episode take a long time to edit. And then, you know, along with all of the other goals, it just takes too long. So to sum it up, these episodes moving forward are going to be shorter, but they should be releasing faster. So I hope you enjoy that. And I hope that's okay with you. If not, let me know down in the comments and I will take all that feedback into consideration and hopefully make more satisfactory episodes faster. Now on to the episode. Let's do aluminum. So, um, last episode I decided I need a place to relocate my factory. And uh, I decided that it would be near the desert and the beach. So we've got on the edge of the desert a new suspended factory. I was thinking about what I was saying last stream about being, you know, low environmental impact. So I decided, you can see the train up there, to extend the train station where we stopped last episode out to the edge of the map, and I'm gonna run that down to my second fuel power gen, uh, generators. And I built this kind of like stilts thing, so why don't I get up onto the train tracks and show you guys. So this is a... <sighs> well, okay, I haven't decided exactly what I'm doing with it, but I've got these legs that are the supports for the factory. They're gonna be much thicker because they're going to be the place where I actually put the belts to get materials up to the factory. So imagine this thickness, but then like four or five times the thickness downwards. So there'll be really meaty supports. And then I'm thinking I'm just gonna have kind of like a skewed um, parallelogram for the um, or the factory shape so it'll be slanted from the support all the way up and then it will like kind of extend over towards the bay and then underneath is where the train's going to meet up so the train's going to come down here go to the fuel plant it'll come around uh pass through the bottom of this factory you can see i've kind of i'm starting to build a floor underneath um i was hoping to have that done by the day but it it didn't it didn't happen and then I'm gonna drop all the supplies into the train and then let it come straight through and back around a loop at the giant man. So that's the plan for the train network. And uh, I'll do the cart thing and we'll, uh, and read chat and we'll, uh, we'll go down and look at the factory. Okay, do I not have the cart with me? So, <laughs> <laughs> Offline something happened. I was using the cart to travel along the train and I think yeah, it dropped It dropped and I couldn't get it So let's go grab that Today I would like to I Would like to start aluminum despite not being ready for it I don't think but I want to get started on it 
so I can start automating some of the aluminum. Okay. Uh, yeah, Josh basically said he was just 100% okay with React videos and then added that, that even if he wasn't, it didn't matter because it falls under fair use. It absolutely does. That's like one of the, th that's one of the top comments that I get is like, I don't think this is fair use. And I'm like, I could give you the legal standard test for fair use and my stuff checks all the boxes. So I, I just don't bother because it's not like, it's not a, it's not a good conversation. You don't, I don't have to have it, you know? I can get why some channels don't want people reacting to them. There are a few speedrunners I watch that don't want people reacting to their stuff, especially their world record runs. I get that. Like, if your content is hard to rewatch, like, it's kind of what this, the one and done kind of content, like, it, I think it really does hurt it. Like, I'll be honest. I have watched reactions for content that I don't like because I want to know what people think about it. Like, uh, Moist Critical, exa for example. Moist Critical reacted to a documentary about James Corden. I don't care about James Corden at all. I mean, he's always never really appealed to me. Wait, wait where am I? I went past the cart. He's never appealed to me, but I watched Moist Critical react to a documentary about about him. And I was like, this is fine. I, I watched like five minutes of the video because I got what I wanted, but... <sighs> but like that kind of content, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not the maybe not the greatest, I don't know. People refer to this area as the Nexus, by the way. Lots of people consider this as the best location on the map. Yes. So there is so much here. Uh and actually this is why I built my fact factory here. I haven't named it yet. Um, uh, but the Iron Canyon uh, I guess it's the Iron Canyon is what I call it, is is where I wanted it because I wanted to put all the iron stuff there. I think I'll cart aluminum here. So when we find aluminum We'll put aluminum in this factory. When am I naming the doggos? I don't know. I, I don't have a way to like keep track of the names and I can't differentiate them between each other. So, but I guess we could come up with a bunch of names and I could just pick one every time I see one. Here we go. <laughs> So, the cart is so hard to control at speed. Although this is going much better than I would have thought. I learned that I can't I can't hold down the steering buttons cuz then Okay. Give them each their own house. That's an amazing idea. Oh. Did you see that? <laughs> I didn't take any damage. And I landed upright. Holy crap. <laughs> How am I so lucky in this game? Woo. Uh, I kind of want to name one of them Homer Simpson. The name for that one that keeps bringing you radioactive waste, Oppenheimer. I could name one Oppenheimer and one radio Homer Simpson. I'd be down for that. What do you fill that cart with, Satan? <laughs> well, this cart, it doesn't have fuel. So, here is our factory. I have a couple things going here. I have a bit of um, steel. And the steel is running at basically one for one efficiency to the coal. So, uh, I'm pretty happy about that. It will be Excuse me, one for one for the coal efficiency. Consumption to use, uh, to supply. And then the steel rolls in. It's still pretty, it's still pretty muddy. Like, all the, all the visuals are kind of not great. But, you know, things at least run in nine, mostly 90 degree angles. And, uh, yeah, so it's like, it's V2. I mean, it's, it's. It's just, it's a little bit of an iteration from the spaghetti. Um, this is the iron area, which I haven't continued yet. I haven't actually figured that out. I don't know what I want to do with it. Uh, this is my thinking spot. When I'm like, how do I want to organize these? 
I already put these um, <laughs> these frames. The these are for oh modular frames. They don't have power. Why don't I have power? Because I haven't finished hooking them up, so I won't do that right now. I might actually move those so I don't have to deal with. Um. Yeah, I put them. I put them way too close to these iron constructors. Oh, and I also have an entire unused coal line, so I'm going to be using that for something. Probably aluminum. So we'll see about that. Yeah. All right, let's go to the box site and then I will scan for aluminum and I'll pick up that hard drive on the way. You're basically on the edge of the Spire Coast where there are a ton of oil nodes. Just set up the first part of my fabric production plus fuel generator array right down there near that geyser. Uh, What geyser? I did not see a geyser. Oh, there's quartz there too. So I'm, I'm, I think that, yeah, this is definitely going to be my aluminum array. Um, the oil though, I, I have set up oil down here. That's where the, the fuel, fuel gen is. Bauxite is aluminum. You have to render the bauxite into aluminum using water and coal. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Lap Dragon. <laughs> I did not understand that. All right. Two for one. Three for one. Four for one. Wow, these guys are hardy. Wow, they're... Are they all just chasing the spot where the sound came from? I'm sorry, I'm mesmerized by this. They were all chasing the same spot, which is where I was hitting. And then I just... I just... AoE'd them. Wow. I feel bad, although these guys look kind of wicked. All right, let's uh, let's uh, let's start let's start some mining. I'm gonna need production. Nope, nope, nope. I need equipment workshop and some portable miners. Damage reduces with distance. That doesn't make sense. It's explosive. Don't feel bad, those guys are jerks. Yeah, I guess. Uh, okay, so... Is this underneath? I mean, it's not perfect, but I think that's... That's gonna do... How am I going to do this? Because I was planning on running this up and then underneath the train track, but that's not going to be very optimal, is it? Pull... 240... Let's just start with Mark IV. Oh, that's so ugly. Oh. I'm going to try again. Hopefully that's a little more straight. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. Okay. Build a second rail and just set up a train loop. Or just jump, run a long belt. I... Oh yeah, I, bu I built a little... Um, industrial tree. So I could climb up. Get pack up.
if you place the freight station first, you can connect the elevator downwards. Um, so I wasn't planning on doing a freight station here because, because I was just going to build belts to the factory since it's, since it's just right there, I was going to build belts there. But you make an interesting point. That's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea at all. Uh, although, I think this fr this train station is backwards. Strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. For <laughs> nice. Thank you, Inkbox. Uh, let's do that, actually. I'm gonna... I'm gonna move the train station just a little bit. Let's move it up here. My autosave is getting a little bit full. Or at least it's taking a while. Comply. 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 All she says is comply. Except when I ignore her. You know, when she tells me how to do useful stuff. <laughs> and now it's just a little bit too high. Oh well. Can't win everything. You could build a temp station for lining things up. I could. Honestly, I I I could I could over optimize this entire game like crazy. So like I'm really practicing you know, I'm practicing prototyping things and then fixing it later or having a second iteration. This game is such a good, like, chill out game that I could see myself just staying in here and, like, fixing things. Man! Why optimize when you can have a belt weave? I know, right? Oh! Sloppy Illumina! Already! Although, owl clad casing? Three aluminum to two. Or almost double the output for more resources. Sloppy is far by far the best one. Let's do it. I'll, I'll believe you guys. Alright, let's go back to the factory and start some aluminum. I don't actually know where to put the aluminum yet because the train doesn't actually run here. The train this train station is actually temporary. I'm going to delete it because I'm not actually putting it there. What did I leave behind? Okay, that's fine. I'm going to be putting the train station underneath. It's going to be underneath where all the supplies and smelting goes. All of the smelting is going down a level so that the smelting happens underneath and then the, the resources get pushed through the floor. And then um... And then everything up here is just going to be manufacturing. Oh, that's why I was going to do a belt, because the train station isn't near ready. Dang it. The addiction continues. Love the SkyTrain idea. I routed my train through the environment on my last save, and it was a lot of work. Yeah, I, I didn't want to deal with that. Actually, I wanted, I wanted a tour of the world. That's really what I wanted. And then after the fact, I was like, oh, I don't have to break the environment. That's nice, because I want to keep everything pristine. All my spaghetti factory I'm going to be tearing down once I get this up and running at full efficiency and aesthetic. Well, okay, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Aesthetically, like, the aesthetics are the last thing that, that I'm going to fix, but at least efficiency, functionality, and convenience, because I'm, I'm going to want to have all of these supply boxes um, centralized in one location in a supply mall in the in the floor like underneath in the subfloor process is bauxite and water makes alumina then solution and coal into aluminum scraps then scraps are made into ingots oh, okay rough out the process first am I building a sky tower or manufacturing power of manufacturing power yes that is exactly what i'm doing it's going to be kind of like my other computer fabrication plant just a lot larger and a lot fatter 
You can put multiple engines on a train. You can put engines on both ends of the train facing opposite direction, opposite directions to automate back and forth travel. Oh. Let's do that now then. Let's do that now then. Yes, okay. Uh, PNDB just completely enabled me to do something scrappy, so let's do it. Decom the spaghetti factory, but leave it as a standing monument to your rise to power. Well, I wanted to clear up the environment there to like make it clean, but you know you make a you make a strong argument. <laughs> Aluminum is a weird set of factories. You'll want to put down the buildings and sort out the layout before you actually build it in the final location. You know, I just realized, as you say that, Lap Dragon, I just realized that water. Like, I built this over water so I'd have access to water. But I despise pumping. I despise pumping. I hate it. I don't like how it's inefficient. I, I, like, I don't like how it's slower. So the plan was to have these supports run down to the water and then do whatever I needed to do on ground floor. Near the water. So I this lake here, above the waterfall, I think I'll probably put aluminum right here and just pump onto the shore. And then alumina, aluminum scraps. As long as until I get aluminum scraps, then I'll then I'll start belting it up here. So maybe I actually want to belt the bauxite. Maybe I'll belt it on land then. So uh, sorry if you were hoping to to see me train it, but I think I think I'm going to be belting it on land for now. You only need 80 water per bauxite. You can get 120 wastewater from turning solution into scraps. So you can run that back into your water input. Oh. Water to packager, then send package water up to the top and unpackage it. Is that more efficient than pumping water? Packager is better than pumping. Uh, okay. 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 Let's... Because I... Okay. Okay, let's step back. I don't have plastic here. But I don't necessarily need a ton of plastic. I just need a, enough... Enough... What's it called? Cart... Brain... My brain has been overclocking all day, so now I'm, now I'm kind of gassed. So, um, whatever the thing you put in the packagers. So I just need enough cartons, I guess, and I'll reuse them and I'll belt them back down. Does it destroy the cartons when I unpackage it? I guess that's my assumption is that it doesn't destroy empty containers. Thank you, Lap Dragon. <laughs> that was so hard for me. My brain was smoking and they don't go away. Okay, cool. Thanks, Nox. Let's go get, let's go get, let's go get um, stuff for the packagers and the empty containers. Thank you guys, I appreciate that. I, I I don't want to deal with pumping. I was kind of loathing dealing with trains, like train shipping for now, because I've been putting that off. I just kind of want to build the network. My plan is to have, well, what I was going to do is have one giant train that just goes to every single base, fills up on all the various materials, and distributes it evenly across all the, the all of the bases, but I just realized I'll need programmable splitters for that in the first place in order to actually like rate limit things. <sighs> I don't know how these brakes work. I assume that I am braking right now. It's just going too fast. If you're building this high, the two easiest options are to build a water tower that gives you head lift everywhere, or do what I do, make a dedicated water packaging plant and set up logistics. That makes sense. Yeah, I really wish I had set up at least basic packaging, not packaging, but basic train um, shipping. That was what I wanted to have by the end of this stream, or by the beginning of this stream, but I, I just didn't have the time offline. 
Um, because plastics, I definitely don't want to build a second plastics plant. Um, but I don't have enough inventory to get it over there right now. Maybe I'll put a third freight train on. Freight car. Yeah, let's do that. And then I'll just put the I'll put a bunch of plastics in here and we'll build a packager and I'll have it run building canisters right now. So let's let's just fill up on Let's fill up on plastic right now. Uh Mocknicker. Mocknicker? Is that how you say it? Uh Happy first time chat and welcome. Other benefit of setting up a train network, every resource is I can send a train to grab resources on demand. Really? As long as you set up... Whoops. Guess I uh, left that one on not running. Um, as long as you set up the the train fl uh, routes, right? That's That's what you mean? Uh, Dark Raven Fire, happy first time chat, and uh, welcome. So excited to get my first tra Kraken stream. Absolutely. Thanks for checking out the channel. Also, do I not have any stored plastics? Is my is my usage of plastics so high? Nuts. I think that's what's happening here. Oh nope nope nope. I forgot. I forgot. I did overflow. All right, that's good. Uh, lol, that search is why you make an item mall. Yes, exactly. And it is on my list, Lap Dragon. That's 100%. I cannot wait to have a full item mall. Once I get pro programmable splitters, I'm going to try and engineer like a two stack system where I'll have two stacks of every manufactured item and then every raw item or like constituent part I'll have like five stacks uh, in every mall and then I'll have like high capacity malls I have plants <laughs> I have plants cool let's get oh uh, I should production packager let's make two uh, and I need I've got enough for both so we're good so let's head back make some packager and I just realized I should probably check for water extractors as well. Two refineries, parts for refineries. Good call, good call. Wait, what do I need refineries for? Oh, for aluminum. Thank you. Encased industrial beams. I do not have those right now. So let's go grab some. I have not started automating them on the new factory yet, so. Oh my gosh, this looks this looks so bad. <laughs> oh. Let's see if we can dock. Is it going to put it on my full freight car? Or will it actually distribute across the cars? I got to check this now. Oh, I don't have any extra room, so never mind. Let's just go.